The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Carrie Strauss here with realagriculture.com. I am here today with another Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Jen Walker, who is a research manager with Alberta Pulse Growers. We are here today to talk about early season considerations you're going to have for your crop, your Pulse crops. Do you want to talk about some of the things we should be looking out for? I would love to, and I think today we're going to highlight um, three different areas. Um, we're going to talk about seed quality, and I'd like to touch on a couple things, um, considerations regarding seed treatments, and then field selection. Okay, so let's start with seed quality. What sorts of things are you looking out for? So um, if we start at the top and talk about seed quality, um, a few of the things we need to think about is the age of the seed. So one of the things with pulse crops is we have the ability to keep seed and replant it year after year. Um, and this is something that's kind of near and dear to my heart because we're running into it this year. And when I look at the sample of peas that we combined last fall and we were gonna ship them away for germ testing, um, I have a sample of green peas and what I'm looking at is a lot of earth tag, a lot of yellow seeds in my green pea sample. And so this raises some red flags in my head. Um, and the main reason is because if we think about how long we've been planting this particular variety of seed, so this was certified seed four seasons ago. So this means we are four generations off. And what happens over time, because pulse crops are open pollinators, which means bees take pollen from one flower to a next, and that's how um, the seed gets fertilized or the flowers get fertilized, is we have outcrossing. And so what this means when I'm looking in my sample pail is that this variety has outcrossed enough that we're starting to lose some of those genetic traits. So first thing in seed quality, consider the age of your seed. This year we'll be refreshing and buying certified seed on our farm. Um, the second thing we want to talk about is germination and vigor, which is pretty common. Obviously you want good germ and vigor is a test that we don't often think about, but when we're planting early spring, that's something that's actually really important. It tells us about the health of the seeds and um, we talk about it in every crop. We're planting it to really adverse conditions and so it's important to have vigorous seed, not just good germination. And the third thing, um, when we're talking about seed quality, particularly about pulses, is often we hear or have questions about people asking um, the ascochyta rating. And so ascochyta is a foliar disease that shows up mid to late summer. It's actually one of the main reasons why peas fall over and everybody curses them. Um, but that, that disease can be carried on the seed coat. Um, it requires special testing and we recommend not planting your pea seed if that percentage is 10 or above. So if it's 10% or less ascochyta on your seed, you're good to go. If it's 10% or above, um, you risk just increasing transmission of the disease in the field. And so now moving on to field selection, what sorts of things are you gonna be looking at if you haven't maybe made that choice of where your pulse crops are gonna go this year? Okay, so um, outside of what we would say is a normal rotation, um, which generally we recommend a pulse crop one every four years. Um, so when we think about the field, one of the things that we know about pulse crops is there are a few weeds that can be notoriously hard to control. And so, for example, um, if I was coming into this particular field, which we're on barley stubble, uh, which is actually set to be a pulse crop this year, um, one of the things that I would have needed to note last year, actually, is do I have any Canada thistle patches that are really hard to control? Um, you know, those type of broadleaf weeds that are, uh, we just don't have great herbicide options for in peas. So knowing the weeds that were in my field. The other thing is um, peas particularly like well-drained soils. So there are some really heavy clay patches in this field. Um, there was some water sitting last year. I'd want to make sure that I identified those spots and check them out this spring. Um, we look for herbicide carryover. Uh, last year, probably not a big deal. We were really soggy through June and July. So we don't tend to see the same amount of herbicide carryover in wet seasons as we do in dry seasons. But a lot of the herbicides that are used on cereals can have a carryover effect up to two years after. So those are kind of things that we need to think about. 
So uh, when we're looking more at seeding, um, do you want to talk a bit about seeding depth, stuff like that, how that could impact diseases if you're going too deep or you're trying to chase any moisture in some of the drier conditions? Ooh, that's a good question. And I don't know that we have a lot of good answers about the correlation between the two. Um, we know that most pulse crops, with the exception of dry beans, um, you can actually seed really early. They're quite tolerant of cooler soils. They like moisture, they're a big seed. And when seeds germinate, um, they actually increase their weight by taking on water up to 200%. So if you think about the size of the seed and adding double its weight in water, we need to chase that a little bit. So uh, pea seeds, fava beans, chickpeas, um, all between an inch to two inches depth is probably okay. Um, there's a little bit of debate. If it's a really dry condition, do you chase moisture? I know some people have seeded peas three inches deep and it's been fine. Um, seeding rate, row spacing, there's lots of research on it. Um, there's been some good data and, and pretty much everything settles out at that 90 plants, 75 to 90 plants per square meter, um, which is seven to nine plants per foot. Um, and of course, uh, we have this great seeding rate calculator on our website. Um, peas, fava beans, lentils, all of the pulse crops have a wide range of seed size. So it's really critical to actually calculate your seeding rate based on your thousand kernel weight. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Any messages to producers as we head into the season? Um, I think the one other thing that I want to touch on, Kara, is seed treatments. So we have three options or three considerations when it comes to seed treatment. Um, we recommend a seed treatment, bar none. If you're going to plant pulses into the ground, please use a seed treatment. Uh, it's like going outside without a coat. Kara knows how much I complained today about going out and it will take me 20 minutes to warm up inside. And so just like when we plant our pulses into cold soils, everything moves more slowly and we're not as strong and vigorous. So we need to protect them as much as possible, which is why I have lots of coats on. Um, so choices for seed treatments. The first one is just a general seed tree that covers off lots of the seed damping off. Um, so Fusarium, Rhizoctonia, Pythium, and those are generally metal axles. You have a choice to add um, a group 22 herbicide um, that will suppress early season aphanomyces. Um, so that's a choice that you can add to that cocktail. The other choice we have into a seed treatment is to add an insecticide, um, which would protect against P leaf weevil. There's a lot of debate as to whether that pays off in the end. And if you want more information on trying to decide whether to add an insecticide or not an insecticide, whether to add a phanomyces or not a phanomyces package to your seed treatment, please feel free to reach out to me. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much.